Hi, welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the role of chromatin and histones in gene expression. In a previous topic, we looked at the structure of DNA. We saw that DNA is organized into chromosomes, and I'm showing you the human chromosomes here. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that every human cell contains 23 pairs of chromosomes. The only exceptions are gametes, which have 23 single chromosomes, and red blood cells, which do not have any chromosomes, as they don't have a nucleus. Remember that genes are found on chromosomes. Each gene encodes the amino acid sequence of a polypeptide or a protein. In the first stage of protein synthesis, the gene is transcribed to produce messenger RNA. Now, transcription is carried out by the enzyme RNA polymerase. However, in order for RNA polymerase to carry out transcription, other proteins have to bind to the DNA upstream of the gene. Scientists call these proteins transcription factors, and we'll be looking at transcription factors in a later video. So as we've said, when a gene is transcribed, messenger RNA is produced. The mRNA is then translated on ribosomes to produce the polypeptide. Now humans have around 20,000 protein coding genes, and this raises an interesting issue. As we've seen, every human cell, apart from gametes and red blood cells, contain all of the human genes. However, most cells only produce a small proportion of the total possible number of different proteins. For example, insulin is only produced in the beta cells of the pancreas, and antibodies are only produced by B cells in the immune system. So this means that genes are regulated. Transcription of a gene can be turned on when a specific protein is required. Transcription can then be turned down or off when that protein is no longer required. Now, we're going to be looking in detail how transcription is regulated in later videos. In this video, we're looking at the role of chromatin. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that DNA is a very long molecule. In eukaryotes, the DNA is wrapped around proteins called histones, and this allows the DNA to fit into the nucleus of a cell. Scientists refer to DNA wrapped around histone proteins as chromatin. Now, when a cell is undergoing cell division, the DNA is wound very tightly around the histone proteins. In this highly condensed state, the chromosomes are visible, and I'm showing you here the chromosomes in a cell undergoing mitosis. This tightly wound DNA histone complex is called heterochromatin. Now, in this tightly wound state, the DNA cannot be transcribed. In other words, transcription cannot take place when a cell is undergoing cell division. That's because the DNA is so tightly wound around the histones that the RNA polymerase and transcription factors cannot access the genes. Because these genes cannot be transcribed, scientists say that the genes have been silenced. I'm showing you here the nucleus of a cell which is not undergoing cell division. This cell is an interphase. Now, in interphase, the DNA is much more loosely wrapped around the histone proteins, and you'll notice that the chromosomes are not visible. This loosely wrapped chromatin is called euchromatin. In euchromatin, the RNA polymerase and transcription factors can access the genes, so in euchromatin, transcription may take place, leading to protein synthesis. So this means that transcription can only take place when a cell is an interphase. Now I should point out that gene regulation is a complex topic which we'll explore in later videos. However, whether chromatin is heterochromatin or euchromatin is a factor in whether genes can be transcribed. Now DNA is a negatively charged molecule. That's because DNA contains a large number of negatively charged phosphate groups. However, histone proteins are positively charged. So this attraction between the negative DNA and the positive histone proteins allows the DNA to wind tightly around the histones. Now cells can modify the amount of positive charge on histone proteins, and this changes how tightly the DNA is wound to the histones. I'm showing an example here. Adding an acetyl group to a histone protein makes the histone less positive. This is called acetylation, and the acetyl group comes from acetyl coenzyme A, which we saw in the link reaction. Now this causes the DNA and histone proteins to pack less tightly together. So the chromatin changes from heterochromatin to euchromatin. And this makes the DNA more accessible for RNA polymerase and transcription factors. 
So acetylation of histone proteins can increase the transcription of certain genes. If the acetyl groups are removed, then this is called deacetylation. Deacetylation has the opposite effect, causing the DNA and histones to pack more tightly together, and this reduces the transcription of certain genes. Now histone acetylation and deacetylation is carried out by different enzymes, and whether histones are acetylated or deacetylated is used by cells to determine whether specific genes are transcribed or not. This process plays an important role in epigenetics, and we'd be looking at epigenetics in the next video.